Okay, so next we want to build an 8-bit adder. So to make an 8-bit adder inside our project, we click project add circuit and we will call it 8-bit adder. So here it is. And to build 8-bit adder from 1-bit adders, you click on 1-bit adder once and then move your mouse inside the drawing area and you can place this one bit adder inside eight bit adder. So make sure with double click that you are inside eight bit adder, then click only once on one bit adder, drag the mouse inside the drawing area and you can place these one bit adders. And to make eight bit adder, you will need eight pieces of one bit adder. So I can copy and paste and copy and paste. And here I have eight pieces of one bit adder. And the reason that I put uh, carry in on the right side and carry out on the left side is that we are going to make a simple ripple adder where we calculate the first location will be bit zero and the last location will be bit seven. And when we calculate A plus B plus carry in, the carry out for this position will be the carry in for the next position. So we have easy connection. So we will add two 8-bit numbers. So I select input, but this input can only hold one and zero, but in its settings, I can select data bits eight, and now it holds eight bits at the same time. And this I will call A. I will need the second input, which I will call B. Now to make it easier to understand, maybe uh, I'll draw it this way. A, when I select A and drag it into any of these one bit adders, this gives me an error because A line is eight bits wide, but this input only accepts one bit. So to split these bits into single bit lines, I need to use wiring splitter, select that its pan out is eight and bit width in is also eight and it will be facing south. Now, if I drag A to this splitter, it splits in all eight bits into separate lines. And now I just need to connect each bit to its corresponding adder. So for example, I'll start from right to left. So this is input B, this is input A. So A goes here. Next A bit goes here. Next A bit is this. Like this. And like this. Okay, so all A inputs are connected to corresponding A bits. Next, we need to do the same thing with B. Now I just need some place to put B's splitter. So, how to do it best? Maybe like this. So I can just copy the same splitter with the same settings, just careful. and connect the outputs of B to the inputs of adder. Just be careful where the lines cross because if the lines go over each other, then they automatically connect.
Okay, so this way, each bit of A is connected to each adder's corresponding input and B, each bit is also connected to one bit adder's <coughs> the other input. So now we also need to put input carry in, the initial carry in. So for simplicity, initially we will assume that it's just zero, but in some cases it will be other than zero. So in the when we add bit zero of A and bit uh, zero of B, we have A, B and carry in. And as soon as we calculate the result, this carry out needs to be fed to the next adder to add the first bit of A and B and carry and so on. So the carry out of each block is the carry in for the next block. And here we have carry out the final carry out of addition and we will actually be using it. So I will make it as an output of this 8 bit adder. So this will be carry out and it will face east. And we also need output Q. So I put output Q, I select data bits eight, I give it name Q and I'm facing it north. So its connection point is here. And I need a reverse splitter, which is the same splitter to span these eight bits into Q. So now it's going to be facing north. like this and each bit goes into this reverse splitters uh, each bit. So in Logisim splitter and reverse splitter is the same object, it senses when you connect input versus output. Okay, uh, so we probably have built an 8-bit adder. To test it, we can use the hand tool and we can input some numbers A and B and see if the output is the sum of these numbers. For example, 1 plus 1. As we can see, Q is 2. To see it in uh, normal numbers, we can click on this line and we can see the contents of each bus. For example, binary is hard to understand. Uh, so we can click on the bus and it shows us the number that is being passed in it. And by default, it shows binary and decimal with signed decimal. Initially, we will need to show it in hex and in decimal. So we go to file preferences and in layout, we select first radix when wire poked will be unsigned decimal. And the second radix when wire poked will be, for example, hexadecimal. And now when I click on this line, it shows me the number in decimal and in hexadecimal. So for example, I set A to 111001. I click on this line and it says it's 50, uh, 57 in decimal or 39 in hexadecimal. And the second number we select something else. So 57 plus 45, we can use calculator to add. And it's, it's 102. And then when I click on this queue, it says 102. So this adder calculates everything correctly and carry in just adds one to the entire sum. So when I said carry in to one, it just adds one to A and B. So here the result is 103. And carry out bit in this case helps us detect if we have overflow. For example, we want to add 255 plus 255 and the result is 510 and it does not fit in eight bits. 
so carry out is set, which warns us that we added too big of uh, numbers to fit in the resulting register. So we probably have error here. 255 plus 255 is not 255. It should be 510. Uh, sorry, carry in should be set to zero. So 254 and carry out bit is set. And another bit that we have, which is used for signed overflow detection will be the bit. There is some math under it. I'm not gonna explain it to you now, we talked about it in the lessons, but uh, when we add signed numbers, the overflow can be detected as XOR of final uh, adders carry in and carry out. So I will put under gates, XOR gate, narrow two inputs facing west. So signed overflow bit by proof of mathematics is this bit XOR this bit. So for the last adder's position, carry in, XOR, carry out. So for example, if we interpret these numbers as signed numbers here under file preferences, we can select, for example, instead of hexadecimal, signed decimal. So when we click on this line with hand tool, it says 255 as unsigned number or minus one if we think it's a signed number. And here the same, so minus one minus one is minus two. So when we click on this line, it says for unsigned numbers 254, but for signed numbers, it's minus two. So for signed numbers, there is no overflow. So signed overflow bit V is zero. So we know there's no error. So if we wanted to add minus one minus one, the result is correct. If we wanted to add 255 and 255, the result is incorrect and carry out is showing it. Okay, so that is 8-bit adder. And now we want to make it as a block, as a building block for our next actions. And so I go to this edit viewed circuit sub circuit appearance, and I need to modify this 8-bit adder, you know, push these inputs and outputs in a more convenient way. So I will make it into a bigger box, something like this. So A, and probably I don't need this line. So A will be on this side, B will be on the right side, <clears throat> Q, So this is Q, Q will be here, let's see. Here's the arithmetic logic unit. So carry out goes in here, this is Q. Mm -hmm. So Q is on the bottom right part. This is carry out. And in our arithmetic logic unit, it goes to the left side, yes. So carry out stays where it is. This is signed overflow flag. We will put it in this location and carry in will be put here. And the anchor we can put, for example, here. And inside of this box, we can put text, for example, 8 bit add there and put it here so we know what it is 8 bit adder so once again this is input a this is input b this is input carry in for the first bit this is output q this is signed overflow bit and this is carry out bit okay 
So this is our eight bit adder. <laughs> 